This is uh, Jarvis, Jarvis Billigoti, the big bad bear. They're my company, my, my company, my, 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 they're the dogs that go with me. All my life I live TSD, the leg bow life is the life for me. We chuck our chose, we finesse our grubs, we chug our beer while we troll our plugs. We spend our whole day just making waves on John Jay. Today I'm, we're kind of doing a tour of Wawit Bay right here locally at Page, you know, Wawit launch ramp here at, and boy the thing is is you don't have to go far to find fish on Powell. It's such a huge lake, it's 186 miles long, you know, as a matter of fact the highway is just right up the hill right here. And this is, I spent my childhood walking these banks right here. You know, you park on the side of the highway and fish it. It's great fun, you know. So if you're out there and you don't have a boat, this is a great lake for bank fishing. So today we're just doing a tour of this local area. I haven't fished this yet, this year. I'm just kind of exploring some new country. You know, and like I said, this 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 structure looks really good because what you're looking for on Lake Powell is this broken structure, this the cobbly stuff. If this stuff was underwater that you can see on the shoreline, we'd be getting a lot more bites. But you can't see it over there where you're at. But the bank at the bottom right here is really sandy. And if you see sandy bottom without that cobble, move on. Find get get to where you have this cobble in the water, and you know how that's where the fish are. Basically, what you're trying to do is, is emulate a crawdad, a crawfish, and crawfish need a rock to you know they like rocks to hide under and you know a crawdad's never going to be hanging out on a beach you know on, under you know a flat sandy area it's all about spots finding spots night at 98 percent of the shoreline is shit it, you're not going to catch fish fish on this lake anyway especially this time of year you know it, if if you put this in front of them and jig it the right way, they're gonna bite it. Flashy, flapping hog, creature, thinger, whatever, with twirling, dancing girls attached to the back, you know, and they're changing every way. It's the color, it's the weight, it's the... No, it's the spot you're in. Find the spot where the fish are, and they'll bite most anything if you throw it at them the correct way. This is, this is my Lake Powell fishing box right here. We have a green tube. We have a clear tube, we have a darker, you know, black or whatever. Then we got chartreuse, pumpkin, and then brown. And then I have fish an eighth ounce Yamo jig head in that, with the lightest I can get. The light, I don't like to fish the heavier jigs, the only the jig heads. The only reason I, I use the, the heavier jigs is, is on a windy day. Well, what you do with this is you st take the, the jig head, and you just shove it right up its arse. Right here, shove it up its arse, like yay. And run that to that, that lead head all the way to the tip, to the tip. <laughs> and then you take it and you pop, pop it through like that. So you can get to the hole. <laughs> You want to finesse fish this. It's a, it's a slack line bite. You very rarely feel the bite like dink dink, you know. You really want to pay attention to it as it falls when you first cast out. So many people will cast out, you know, and then they talk or they look away or they're, you know, doing something, picking their ass or something. And, and that fish. There we go. It's biting it on the way down. You could call those rats or cookie cutters. Just lit, you can catch a million of these when the you know time is right. They're fun. They're fun and they're great eating. When you cast out, you really want to you know. 
what I'd like to do is hold my rod tip up and, and just have a rainbow, a rainbow in my line. That way I can see, I just got hit. There he is. Another little rat. Oh, Whoa! LDR, long distance release. I meant to do that. And I got hit on the way down. And, and the reason I could see it is my line is bowed, but not too slack. Not a bunch of, not a bunch of, you know, huge amount of slack, but just a rainbow. And then you can see the line just move or tick or start to move left or right. And so it's, it's a visual thing that you're, you're seeing the bite rather than feeling it. And then as it, once it falls, you just pick that bait up. Just think, think, I call it touching the bait. Just touch, touch, touch and then drop it back down and keep that bow in your line. You're just touching the bait. And what, what you wanna do is when you feel something, a lot of times they'll pick it up, you know, as it, as it flutters up and they'll pick it up, but they don't move off with it. And you, when you lift up and touch that bait, all you feel is it, is it just the heaviness of it, that all of a sudden your eighth ounce jig just turned into, you know, an ounce of, of of weight and that's another thing that that's the one that the people my clients miss the most is that um that when they pick it up in the air it, you know as it's fluttering they pick it up and you touch it and all you're doing is pulling that fish in just a little, turning his nose and people because it's not a pull bite they don't think it's a fish and so it's really important to have a sensitive rod and um sensitive rod um, you know, a good, a good rod so that you can feel that weight that all of a sudden, hey, my eighth ounce jig just turned into an ounce of weight. There's a fish on there and it's very, very subtle. It's fun, that's it's what I like to do. shoulders that's a walleye I think that's a nice walleye yeah and my nets way the heck back there awesome look at that nice walleye back back get over here why is my net yeah come on yeah look at that bad boy right there that's what I'm talking about that's what I'm talking about I call it a meat tube man these are absolutely the tastiest freaking fish. Oh, you gotta love that. So you see in front of me here, you might not be able to see it in the shade real well, but cut, keep that broken cobble in this cut right here. Awesome. That's where you're gonna catch fish almost all the time. I mean, I can catch these all day. Yeah, they're not. I know you can catch them bigger and Lake Erie and whatnot. And, but boy, come out here and catch 50 of these in a day. I, I ah, come on, hurry up. Float. Oh, come on. Boy, it's just got him right in the cheek. Floating right into the good structure. There we go. There we go. Oh, large mouth, big one. 
Large mouth, big one. Yep, and my net once again. Not, oh yeah. Oh man. Nice one. Nice one. Come on, come on. Oh yeah, come on. Oh. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah, you gotta love it. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. And you know what's funny with this guy right here? Yeah, two and a half or so. Yeah, look at that. Good Lake Powell large. Good Lake Powell large. Yep. All right. All right. And we. We, we, in, on Pow, I, I really like to let all the green fish go. Those are, you catch so many of those. Uh, you catch so many of those little dinky smallmouth. Keep those. Keep, you're allowed 20 on Lake Powell. You're allowed 20, 20 smallmouth. Keep the littler ones. They're so tasty. And those green fish, there's not as many of them on the lake. And let those spawn. And those big, small mouth, let, let those spawn. And, and keep the little dinky ones. And you think, oh, I'm not keeping that little thing. You know, it's too small. Well, no, it's not. I, I keep really small fish. And boy, they are absolutely tasty. Well, that's three species of fish so far this morning. Been fishing about 45 minutes. A wall, a nice walleye, some smallmouth, a nice large mouth. We'll go catch a striper later. That's a guarantee. And then all we got is the crappie for the grand slam of fish on Lake Powell. Oh my God! Look at this. There you go. Boom. Yep. Awesome. Good one. Good fish. Oh, another large mouth. Another large mouth. Yeah, hit it on the sink, baby. Nice fish. Get out of the way, Jarvis. Oh. All right. <laughs> yes. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And that's a tournament fish. That's another bonus about fishing around the, the marina. Is you can see he's got a little spot where, but oh, there we go. Do my thumb through there. Where he has been caught on a, in a tournament, and they release, they release him across the lake, you know. And I'm releasing him. I mean, it's kind of a little bit, you know, scavenging, I guess. But hey, I'll take it. That was cool. So once again, you know, I casted that out, and it's fallen down this little, the front of this point, and I don't have any tension on the line. It's just a bow in the line. It's sinking. All of a sudden, I just see the line just go thump, and just tick. And you just reel down, boom, pop him. And that's the other thing that people have a hard time with is you've got to set the hook. And I fish with a high rod tip up here so that when I feel the bite, you reel down three, four, five cranks to the water, then set it. You want to give them a second. And that's a really hard part for beginners to figure out is um, giving them that second. You, you feel that bite, you want to, and you want to just reel, reel, reel. And when you do that, you, I call it short set. You know, you, you, you limp wristed him, short set him. You, you don't have any power to set the hook up here. You've got to reel down to the water, pop, pop it back to your chest. You know, and, and what, you, you know, what you do is you just get, when you don't set the hook, what'll happen is, is you, you feel the bite, you start reeling, you'll get about five seconds of fight and then that jig will pop out of his mouth almost every time. Unless he inhales it completely to his butthole, you're not going to get him in the, in the boat.
Nice one. Another large mouth. You've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Another nice large mouth. Yeah, not nice, but bam. God dog it, green fish day. Oh, that's, this is a great day. Boy, howdy. Yeah. Number three on the large mouth. That's another, that's probably two pounder or there. You know, I had that two and a half, maybe three. That other one was a little smaller now, maybe pound and three quarters. So. Where would I be sitting today? If I was in a tournament, yeah. In between 10 and five pounds is what we got on the boat. Somewhere in there, it's hard to tell without a scale. for the gods. See that? Boogity, 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 I'm a dumbass! You ever heard of elephant dung coffee? People feed elephant coffee beans and then it shits the coffee bean out. Some poor sons of bitch has to pick out the coffee bean and then they make coffee out of the bean poop. Imagine. You're the dude at what? So, what do you do for a living? Hey, I uh, pick coffee beans out of elephant turd. Oh, you want to go on a date? Oh, fish on. Look at this hog. Oh, he's jumping. Woo! See, now, a lot of folks would say that's too small. No, and you would be right if you were fishing in a tournament, but for me, that little dinky thing, oh, I guess it's like elephant dung coffee for somebody that likes their coffee run through an elephant's anus. following him too yeah this is a, this is not a you know nothing nothing huge but I'll take him all day and then hailed it that'll work huh That one right there is the size of my penis, only bigger. Oh my god, this thing. 
Holy crap. This guy swallowed it so stinking deep that I think he's going to poop it out. He's already digested it, gone through the freaking... Oh my lord. That's a definite keeper right there. I think I just pulled his rectum right out of his mouth. Big old large mouth. Big old large mouth. And I, oh, I have no net. Why? Seriously. Oh man, those are crappie. Freaking crappie in there. I, I just so happened to have a crappie jig. Kidding me? Large mouth, small mouth, walleye, crappie, and a decent crappie at that. Now we're gonna go get a striped bass. Call it the Grand Slam. How many? How many other lakes could you catch five different fish on? Oh my God! Now we're now we're headed to five different species in one day. And you know what? I could put a bread ball on and catch carp and a catfish. I guarantee you to make it seven in a day. Only on Lake Powell, folks. Before we left today, I had no idea that I would have any chance. You know, I wanted to fish local right next to Walweet Bay, within three miles of the bay. I didn't think I would get a crappie, but I'm right in the friggin' wheelhouse of a Grand Slam, and the striper is the easiest one, the easiest fish. So here I am at the dam. Time to go take a nap. Ah, come on. There we go, number two. Number two and two casts. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Fishing, large mouth, small mouth, crappie, walleye, and a striped bass. Hell yeah. 
Look at this little f***ing loveliness that my dogs left me. While I was catching the striper and completing the Grand Slam, my dogs were dookieing on my boat. Wonderful. Yay.